In this video, we will show you non-chemical as well as chemical controls to manage buckthorn. All methods of control need to be monitored on an annual basis. Let's take a look at a site now. Hi, Mike. Hi. How you doing? Good, good. So you marked your woods of uh, buckthorn, right, last year? Yeah, so last fall we went out here and kind of evaluated where some of the buckthorns are, particularly made a mark of where some of these large uh, seed producing trees were on the property. And so that was our kind of objective was to get these taken care of first. Uh, this spring we had a really late plant, so there was a day I was supposed to be out here planting corn, instead rained out, so I uh, came out here with some uh, basil bark treatment and treated some of these large seed producers here. Right now we're just kind of coming out and evaluating the success here. Uh, this clump appears to have died. We've Some of the other ones look to have just been weakened um, and so those will have to be followed up. So we counted about 25 rings on this larger one and so that's one of the reasons you want to go after these large seed producers first. As you can see there's a carpet of uh, smaller buckthorns here but it's going to take a long time before those are producing any more seeds. And so getting these older seed producing ones first gives you some time to go after the, uh, the smaller ones that we're going to take some follow-up. But this is definitely going to shorten the time we have to wait. When you're doing these stump treatments, we want to get that outside ring because the living part of a tree is the outer just underneath the bark uh, component of a tree. And so getting the herbicide on that part uh, makes sure that we get it down into the root system. I did an experiment in my own grove with two buckthorn plants. In the fall, I cut two stumps and treated one, did not treat the other. I set up a trail cam in the spring to see what happened. As you can see, the regrowth on the one that was not treated is remarkable, and obviously the one that was treated died and did not regrow. So the soil disturbance can be a risk to doing the weed wrench in certain areas. Um, a lot of times these spaces are susceptible to invasion uh, by other species, buckthorn being one, uh, and also a risk of erosion. Right here, relatively flat area, the erosion isn't as big of an issue, but you open up this space for additional invasive species establishment. There are many brush herbicides on the market today that are labeled to kill woody trees and shrubs. Of course, it's important to always read and follow label directions for wearing protective clothing, mixing and applying the herbicide. And now working on a foliar application in these areas where it's almost 100% small buckthorns. Brush herbicides may be labeled for foliar applications used to spray the foliage or leaves of buckthorn. Spray leaves to wet avoid desirable plants. Basil bark applications are used to leave the tree in the woods, uh, saving time. You don't have to remove the st stem out of the woods. Uh, it's easy application. It's a benefit to the wildlife that are standing trees as well. Uh, you do have to spray the basil bark around the completely circumference of the tree about 15 to 18 inches from the ground up. So right here we have a chipper, a uh, hydraulic chipper. This works really nicely on field edges and things like that where you don't want a big brush pile or we're trying to get rid of the brush. Uh, this particular one was a seed producing uh, individual. We cut right along the edge of the field here. Uh, so now we'll just chip it up and then that gets rid of the brush problem.
A forestry mower can remove trees up to 8 inches in diameter. Landowners can work with a land or natural resource manager to find buckthorn removal crews or contractors to conduct the initial wave of control. Burning can be an effective tool in controlling small trees if there is adequate fuel. Burning native prairie is suggested every three years. Grazing goats to reduce heavily infested buckthorn woodland areas is an effective practice. Repeat grazing and herbicide spot treatments may be needed to kill buckthorn trees. Annual monitoring is required. So uh, there's a lot of work involved in controlling buckthorn. Uh, you know, it's an ongoing process. We're just getting into this now, but it was kind of rewarding to go out here today and see some of the control efforts that we did this last winter uh, being successful. Uh, there was one particular spot that I thought looked really nice where there was a big flush of uh, wild plums taking over and just a couple of remaining buckthorn. And we were able to take care of those today and hopefully those plums can fend off the buckthorn on their own from here on.